welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 8, Part 1, Word Parts and Anatomy, Relating to the Digestive System. Well, Chapter 8 on the Digestive System is at about the same level of difficulty as Chapter 7, although it is slightly longer because the digestive system does have more structures in it, and also it seems to have a greater number of pathologies. Like the respiratory system, the digestive system is divided into two main parts, the upper gastrointestinal tract and the lower gastrointestinal tract. The term gastrointestinal literally means referring to the stomach and intestines. The upper gastrointestinal tract is composed of the mouth, the throat, the esophagus, and the stomach. The lower gastrointestinal tract is composed of the small intestine and the large intestine. Finally, the digestive system contains three major accessory organs, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. So we're going to start off and look at the upper gastrointestinal tract. And the first term we have is mouth. And there are two word parts that refer to mouth. The first one is oro, O-R slash O. And the second one is stomato, S-T-O-M-A-T slash O. Oro is pretty easy. We've probably heard of oral as referring to the mouth. Stomato is a little trickier. It's used more rarely. You want to be careful not to think that that refers to stomach, for example, since it begins with the same letters. Now the next term is teeth. And the teeth are, of course, part of the mouth. And we've got a couple of word parts that relate to teeth. The first one is odonto, O-D-O-N-T, slash O. And the second one is odontio, O-D-O-N-T-I, slash O. Related to the teeth, we have a word part for the gums. The word part for the gums is gingivo, G-I-N-G-I-V, slash O. After the mouth, we have the throat, which we learned last chapter was part of the respiratory system. It's also part of the digestive system. And do you remember the word part for throat? Hasn't changed. It's pharyngo, P-H-A-R-Y-N-G slash O. After the throat, we have the esophagus. The esophagus is a tube that carries food from the throat to the stomach, just like we have the trachea that carries air from the throat down into the bronchial tree and the lungs. And the word part that refers to esophagus is not too bad. It's esophago, E-S-O-P-H-A-G slash O. The esophagus leads down into the stomach, and the word part for stomach is gastro, G-A-S-T-R slash O. Now we have some additional terms that I'm going to go over with you that are related to stomach, and these are more straightforward anatomical terms. The first one is rugae, R-U-G-A-E. And the rugae are folds in the lining of the stomach, and they contain glands that produce gastric juices and mucus. And the mucus protects the lining of the stomach, and the gastric juices help start the digestive process, help break down the food. At the bottom of the stomach, we have a narrow passage that connects the stomach to the next structure, which is the small intestine. And this structure beneath the stomach is called the pylorus, P-Y-L-O-R-U-S, pylorus. 
And within the pylorus, there is a ring-like muscle that controls the flow of the stomach contents out into the small intestine. And that ring-like muscle is called the pyloric sphincter. P-Y-L-O-R-I-C, and then sphincter, S-P-H-I-N-C-T-E-R. Okay, and I mentioned that uh, we have the digestive process going on in the stomach, and we do have a word part for digestion. Actually, we have two word parts for digestion. The first one is a combining form. It's pepto, P-E-P-T, slash O. Most of you have probably heard of Pepto-Bismol. That's where it comes from, digestion, Pepto. And then we also have a suffix that refers to digestion, and that is hyphen, P-E-P-S-I-A, and that's Pepsia. And we're going to go into more detail in the next episode about the digestive process, but right now we're just getting the word part and some of the basic structures. Okay, well now let's go ahead and just try to do some practice. Number one, what is the word part that refers to the gums? That's gingivo, G-I-N-G-I-V slash O. And what is the combining form that refers to the stomach? That's gastro, G-A-S-T-R slash O. What is the term for the ring-like muscle that controls flow from the stomach to the small intestine? That's the pyloric sphincter, P-Y-L-O-R-I-C sphincter, S-P-H-I-N-C-T-E-R. And what is the term for the folds in the lining of the stomach that produce gastric juices and muckus? That's the rugae, R-U-G-A-E. What is the suffix that refers to digestion? Well, that's Pepsia, hyphen P-E-P-S-I-A. What are the two combining forms that refer to the mouth? Well, the first one is oro, O-R, slash O. And the second one is stomato, S-T-O-M-A-T, slash O. And what is the word part that refers to the throat? Well, that's faringo. P-H-A-R-Y-N-G slash O. And finally, what is the word part that refers to the esophagus? Well, that's esophago, E-S-O-P-H-A-G slash O. Esophago. Okay, well, after the food that's being digested flows out of the stomach, it then goes into the lower gastrointestinal tract. And the first structure that is part of the lower gastrointestinal tract is the small intestine. And the small intestine digests food and absorbs nutrients actually into the bloodstream. And we do have a word part for small intestine, and that is entero. E-N-T-E-R slash O. And the small intestine is divided into three major sections, and I'm going to go over the terms for those with you. 
The first one is duodenum. D-U-O-D-E-N-U-M. Duodenum. The second and middle section is called the jejunum. And that is J-E-J-U-N-U-M. Jejunum. And the last and longest section is the ileum. I-L-E-U-M. Not to be confused with the bone. That's the ileum. That's spelled I-L-I-U-M. So that's the small intestine. Then after being digested and absorbed in the small intestine, what's left goes into the large intestine. And the large intestine processes waste products in preparation for excretion through the anus. And we don't have a word part for large intestine itself, although we do have some word parts for some of the subparts of the large intestine, because the large intestine has four main parts. The first one is the cecum, C-E-C-U-M, and that's a small pouch at the beginning of the large intestine. The second part of the large intestine, which is the largest part, and is the colon, and we have a couple of word parts for that. The first one is colo, C-O-L slash O, and the second one is colono or colano, C-O-L-O-N slash O. And I would say these two tend to be used more or less about the same, actually. Maybe the second one, colano, is used a little more. But in this case, you know, we don't have one that's used a lot and then the other one not so much. Okay, then the colon is divided into four parts. And if you look at your textbook, there is a drawing that shows you these four parts. And the first part is the ascending colon, so named because it goes up inside the abdomen. Ascending is A-S-C-E-N-D-I-N-G. Then we have the transverse colon, so named because at that point the colon goes horizontally across the abdomen. Transverse is spelled T-R-A-N-S-V-E-R-S-E. -E. That means going across. Then we have the descending colon, because at that point the colon is going down again in the abdomen. D-E-S-C-E-N-D-I-N-G is descending. And finally we have the sigmoid colon. Sigmoid means referring to an S, literally. And at that point, the colon makes kind of this S-shaped term uh, before it reaches the end. And sigmoid is S-I-G-M-O-I-D. And we do have a word part associated with that. It's pretty straightforward. And that is sigmoido, S-I-G-M-O-I-D slash O. Well, at the end of the colon, then we reach the rectum. And the rectum has two word parts associated with it. The first one is recto, R-E-C-T, slash O. That's pretty straightforward. And the other one's a little different. It is procto, P-R-O-C-T, slash O. And the rectum is where waste is stored prior to its being eliminated from the body. And that leads us to the final word part, the anus. A-N-U-S, the word part straightforward, it's A-N slash O, and that's the opening through which waste is expelled. Okay, let's go ahead and do some practice on the lower gastrointestinal tract. What are the word parts that refer to the rectum? We've got two. We've got recto, R-E-C-T, slash O. And we've got procto, P-R-O-C-T, slash O. What is the word part that refers to the small intestine? That's entero, 
E N T E R slash O. What is the term for the small pouch at the beginning of the large intestine? That is the cecum, C E C U M. What is the term for the first section of the small intestine? That's the duodenum, D U O D E N U M. And what is the word part that refers to the colon? Well, we have two choices there. We have colo, C O L slash O. You also could have said colano. C O L O N slash O. Well, what is the term for the main part of the large intestine? I hope you didn't find that tricky. That's the colon, C O L O N. And what is the purpose of the small intestine? It digests food and it absorbs nutrients into the bloodstream. And finally, what is the word part that refers to the last part of the colon? Well, that's the sigmoid colon, and the word part is sigmoido, S I G M O I D slash O. Okay, and that leads us to one more section here, and that is related to the accessory organs. And we've also got a few word parts related to pathology. We're going to go over two, but let's first look at the accessory organs. The first accessory organ is the liver. And the word part for liver is hepato, H-E-P-A-T slash O. And the liver has three major functions. The first one is it stores excess glucose or sugar, blood sugar, as glycogen. Glycogen is G L Y C O G N. We'll be learning more about that when we get into the chapter on the endocrine system later on. It also destroys old erythrocytes, if you remember that from chapter five. Um, the liver destroys the erythrocytes. Also, we looked at that a little bit in the immune system chapter. And finally, and this is primarily the part that's related to the digestive system, it secretes bile. And bile is a substance which aids digestion of fats. And we have a word part for bile, and that's coli. C H O L slash E. Now, when the bile leaves the liver, it is carried through a series of ducts known as bile ducts. And we have a word part for bile ducts that's cholangio. C H O L A N G I slash O. And you'll note that this is a combination of the smaller word parts chole, which means bile, and angio, which means vessel. And you'll also note that using our combining vowel rule, the slash e in chole is dropped when it's combined with angio to create the combined word part cholangio, which again refers to the bile ducts. Now these bile ducts that carry the bile away from the liver eventually join together to form a single duct known as the hepatic duct, H-E-P-A-T-I-C duct, D-U-C-T. And it's from the hepatic duct 
that the bile is carried into the remaining part of the digestive system. Okay, that's the liver. And near the liver is another accessory organ called the gallbladder. And this is kind of a tricky word because it sounds like it should be two words, and I always want to spell it as two words, but that's wrong. We ha all have to remember to spell it as one word. Gallbladder is G-A-L-L-B-L-A-D-D-E-R. And the gallbladder's function is it stores bile uh, until it's needed for the purposes of digestion. And it has got a pretty wild word part. Its word part is cholecysto. That refers to the gallbladder. Cholecysto. C-H-O-L-E-C-Y-S-T slash O. Cholecysto refers to the gallbladder. The next major organ is the pancreas. The pancreas secretes pancreatic juices that aid in digestion. And its word part is much easier. It's pancreato. P-A-N-C-R-E-A-T slash O. Now these three accessory organs, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas are connected together by a structure known as the biliary tree. B-I-L-I-A-R-Y tree, T-R-E-E. -E. And the biliary tree channels the bile from the liver and the gallbladder to the small intestine, and it also channels the pancreatic juices from the pancreas to the small intestine. And the biliary tree has four subparts. The first part we've already mentioned, and that is the hepatic duct. H-E-P-A-T-I-C, duct, D-U-C-T, and that comes from the liver. The gallbladder has a duct known as the cystic duct, C-Y-S-T-I-C, duct, D-U-C-T. And that is the point from which the bile can flow in and out of the gallbladder from the liver. Now the hepatic duct that's coming down from the liver joins the cystic duct that goes in and out of the gallbladder to form a third structure known as the common bile duct. And we have a word part for the common bile duct, and that is coledoco, C-H-O-L-E-D-O-C-H slash O. And again, that is the common bile duct, the point where the cystic duct from the gallbladder and the hepatic duct from the liver join together. Now finally, there is a duct from the pancreas called the pancreatic duct, and it joins the common bile duct before the biliary tree then goes and connects to the small intestine. And then we've got just a few word parts that are relating to uh, pathology and procedure. And again, we're going to run into these more later, but this is introducing you to the word parts. First of all, we have word parts for vomiting. And we have a combining form that is emeto, E-M-E-T slash O. Emeto refers to vomiting. And we also have a suffix that relates to vomiting, and that is emesis, hyphen E-M-E-S-I-S. -E we have another new word part that refers to the condition of having a stone. The condition of having a stone. So it's like a disorder of having a stone. And that is hyphen L-I-T-H-I-A-S-I-S. -I -I That's lithiasis. We also have a suffix 
that just refers to stone. A stone is lith, hyphen L-I-T-H. So if we're talking about the stone itself, we need lith, hyphen L-I-T-H. If we're talking about the condition or the disorder of having the stone, then we need lithiasis, and that's hyphen L-I-T-H-I-A-S-I-S. And finally, we have a word part for surgical fixation. And we had one way back in the chapter on the skeletal system relating to like surgically fixating a joint, for example. And that one was desis, hyphen D-E-S-I-S. -S. Now we have a term that relates probably more often to fixating an organ or some tissue that's gotten out of line. And the suffix for that type of surgical fixation is pexy, hyphen P-E-X-Y, pexy. Okay, well let's do one more round of practice here on these terms that are related to the accessory organs and the pathologies and procedures. Number one, what is the word part that refers to the liver? That's hepato, H-E-P-A-T slash O. And what are the two word parts that refer to vomiting? Well, we have the combining form, emeto, E-M-E-T, slash O, and then we have our suffix, emesis, hyphen E-M-E-S-I-S. -E what is the word part that refers to the gallbladder? That's cholecysto, C-H-O-L-E-C-Y-S-T slash O. And what is the substance that the liver secretes that aids in the digestion of fats? Well, that is bile, B-I-L-E. What is the term for the channels that transport secretions from the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas? That's the biliary tree. B-I-L-I-A-R-Y tree. T-R-E-E. -E. What is the suffix that refers to the condition of having a stone. That's lithiasis, hyphen L-I-T-H-I-A-S-I-S, -I -I and that's the condition of having a stone. What is the suffix that refers to a surgical fixation? The one other than desis. Okay, the new one we've got is Pexy, hyphen P-E-X-Y. What is the combining form that refers to bile? That's Cole, C-H-O-L slash E. And what is the combining form that refers to the bile ducts? That's cholangio, C H O L A N G I slash O. And what is the term for the area or the point? where the cystic duct from the gallbladder and the hepatic duct from the liver join together.
Well, that's the common bile duct. And what is the word part that refers to the common bile duct? That's coletico, C-H-O-L-E-D-O-C-H slash O. And what is the purpose of the gallbladder? It stores bile. And how do you spell gallbladder? Well, that's a tricky one. Remember, it's all one word. It's G-A-L-L-B-L-A-D-D-E-R. And what is the word part? that refers to the pancreas. That's pancreato, P-A-N-C-R-E-A-T slash O. Okay, as usual, I've covered the word parts pretty thoroughly. We've done the high points of the anatomy, the major organs, haven't covered everything. There's a few more things in there you should, should look at. You need to study the book. And in the next episode, we will look at some terms related to the physiology of digestion. So this ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.